And thanks to you at home for staying with us for the next hour. What's going on in Wisconsin, where 68,000 people turned out to protest over the weekend at the state capitol, and thousands more gathered today. Day seven of these remarkable protests. That story. So the last time Scott Walker did something like this, in his desperation to get rid of employees who joined unions, he improperly fired them, he overstated how much money that would save, and then he allowed for a private, foreign-based butt vodka company to put a convicted criminal in charge of security at the Milwaukee Courthouse and City Hall. Woohoo! That's Wisconsin's new governor. That's where he comes from. The playbook here is clear. The priority is to get rid of the unions, to break them up. The pretext to do that is financial, but it is clear that it is just a pretext. The unions at the center of this fight offered to the governor, they said they would essentially give him all the financial concessions he said he wanted, but he said no to that. He doesn't want those financial concessions. He wants to strip them of their union rights or he wants nothing. Finances are just a pretext. Among the most expensive benefit package the state pays for any union employees are the ones for the unions that supported Mr. Walker when he ran for governor. Those also happen to be the only ones who are exempted from his union stripping plan. If this really was about money, those ones would be the first ones on the chopping block. But it is not all about money. Finances are just a pretext. In the midst of this supposed budget deficit emergency that makes necessary this dramatic anti-union bill, the governor supported adding about $140 million to the state's deficit when he passed a bunch of tax cuts without paying for them. Finances are just a pretext. When Governor Chris Christie of New Jersey announces that he needs to do the same thing because of his budget crisis, he's expected to announce that tomorrow. And when jo Governor John Kasich of Ohio moves to do the same thing in his state because of his budget crisis, it will be a pretext in those places, too. Republicans understand that the business interests that support them have always wanted to get rid of unions, as it has always been and as it will always be. But more directly, Republicans understand sources of democratic political power, and they understand sources of democratic political power well enough to be focused across the country on how they can destroy those institutions. Corporations, broadly speaking, support Republicans. In the last election cycle, Chamber of Commerce made donations that were 93% Republican. But the people who cash paychecks instead of sign them, the people who work for companies instead of own those companies, actual humans instead of conglomerates, labor unions, those groups, broadly speaking, do tend to support Democratic causes. Here, again, are the top 10 big money contributors in last year's elections. Seven of the top 10 are right wing. The only three that are not are, ding, 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 unions. Republicans understand enough about the sources of democratic political power to want to destroy the institutions that make it possible for Democrats to compete in elections. The question is whether or not Democrats understand the sources of their political power well enough to defend those institutions against Republican attacks. The other thing they have a real passion for is using public policy to attack and dismantle institutions that support Democrats electorally. So just in case it wasn't crystal clear enough that that's what's going on in Wisconsin, that that's what explains why 70,000 people were in the streets of Madison this weekend. Republicans understand Democrats well enough to know what to attack in order to weaken Democrats. The question now is do Democrats understand their own institutions and their own strengths? well enough to know that they ought to be defending them.